right, good morning everybody. I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply, and in today's video we are going to be building what we call the bar frame wallet. Okay, it is a lady's clutch. Um, this was the subject of last month's mystery box, and due to uh, folks being on vacation and stuff here in the shop, unfortunately I've not been able to be over here in my office to make this video, and I apologize. Um, this mystery box was doomed from the beginning because honestly, when we were ready to ship the mystery, when it came time to ship the mystery box, the uh, the special hardware for it hadn't come in yet. Um, so it was late too. So we're just going to chalk this whole month up as a what the heck. So anyway, um, love this new clutch, okay? Um, I saw these, a uh, lady came into our store actually and she had a wallet like this, but it was, it was factory made, it wasn't a, a handmade item. And I was like, man, I gotta find that hardware because it makes it to where this is like just an open canvas. You can do anything inside of here that you want um, because it comes completely apart. You can put a gusset in it, you don't have to. Um, you can put cards on both sides, you can put all kinds of stuff in this. I mean, it really is just an open book of stuff to do. And um, it's an awesome, easy build because you build everything into the liner, sew the liner to the outside, and then put the bars on it, and it's done. So, like this one, um, I don't know where my phone is. Oops, I'm about So, like this one, I designed where um, you could even slide a phone in here behind this piece. My phone's pretty big, but. Um, Anyway, and then when you close it, uh, the problem with this one is, I'll be very honest, I made these gussets a little bit too wide, so when you close it, they try to squeeze in on the phone. But if I hadn't made them so wide, then you can close this thing down over this phone, and it would be absolutely awesome. But because of that, unfortunately, it does not clasp. That's why we do everything three or four times before we can produce a pattern, because we got to figure those things out. Um, on this one here, the very first one I made, I just put a bunch of card pockets inside of it. And I did the stacked kind of card pockets. Um, and honestly, it, it made it to where it was a much longer build and everything. So, um, yeah. So we've, uh, we've made it to where you can have the, uh, the stacked pockets or the, the Tyvek pockets. Like, we included pieces for both in here, okay? So, here's the template. A lot of pieces to it. So if you wanted to do the, the Tyvek pockets, here's your piece. If you wanted to do the stack pockets, here's your pieces, okay? And on today's build, um, I'll probably do the Tyvek pockets, um, but if you wanted to uh, figure out how to do this one, it's we've got other clutch videos that have this style of pockets. Real easy, you're gonna skive around these three, oops, sorry, these three parts right here. You'll stack one on top of the other, just like that. And then you sew down the middle between the cards. Okay? Um, so, yeah. Uh, other than that, there's a piece in here for if you wanted a zippered zippered pouch inside of it. Totally optional. I mean, the, the, the whole idea behind this this build was, and this, this product was to make it versatile to where you could customize it however you wanted. You need more pockets, that's great. You need a zippered pouch, that's great. You want to put a gusset in it to where it only opens this far? Hey, no problem. We can do all those things. And basically we're just giving you the framework to, to, to build any of those things. Okay? Um, so, without further ado, that's a long enough introduction. I'm going to change over to my overhead camera. You see my microphone here. Uh, my overhead camera, and uh, we'll get to work on this project. All right, folks, so for this project, I have chosen um, a couple of leathers off the shelf that I kind of like. Uh, this is our uh, embossed um, ostrich. I recently did a series of videos where I made a backpack out of this, and they're posted on our Facebook. Um, made a little backpack out of this. Um, and then I'm going to do all the interior work out of this dark brown bridal leather here. And I think that'll make a really nice contrast having the, the yellow and the, and the dark, dark brown. Okay. Um, in the mystery box, we put a bunch of three to four ounce import veg tan. Um, it is what this one is made out of. It will work for this. Uh, it is a tiny bit thicker than I like to use, but honestly, 
once again, this box was doomed from the beginning and I just didn't have what we needed in time to get it out. Um, so, I am going to, I was going to machine sew this one just for the, the, the time saving and everything, but we have some new stitching chisels that I really want to try out. Um, Doc that works here, he does not like our pricking irons. He says, no, I like these, these diamond chisels way more, and he, I mean, he just refuses to use our pick, pricking irons. So we're going to see what all the hype's about. We ordered in a bunch of sets of these, these diamond chisels that he likes, and uh, we'll let our customers decide which ones they like more. I know as far as economics go, the, uh, the, these chisels are uh, um, priced at a, at a much more budget-friendly price than the, the pricking irons are. Anyway, so I'm going to set these two pieces aside. I don't need them because I'm not doing stacked cards, okay? I'm going to do the Tyvek method, all right? So I am going to use this and, uh, and build my, and cut my, uh, my piece out for that. And yeah, I uh, just now realized I forgot a tool, so I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that, folks. I, uh, it's kind of hard sometimes with my office being over here and the shop being over there. And sometimes, like now, I've, I've been over there for a week, so a lot of my tools migrated over there. So as I come across that, I'm like, oh, crap, got to go get another one. <laughs> All right, so this piece that I'm lining up right now is the wallet back and the liner. They're going to end up being the same, same size, okay? And... Um, so I'm going to cut one out of the lining material, and then later on, we'll cut one out of that, that yellow ostrich, uh, embossed ostrich, um, for the outside, okay? I'm just going to lay my template up there and cut around it with a nice, fresh scalpel blade. Put this nice grid um, mat down so I could see when I was on and off camera and I'm still off camera. All right. And then if you see in the reflection of the template, I also covered my overhead light with some paper. Um, kind of my ghetto way of doing things. I should pay attention to what I'm doing here, folks. I can use this piece for other stuff, but um, I just totally miscut that after moving it and not checking to make sure it was still aligned. So. One more again. Let's see how far off that bottom angle was going to be. Alright. Alright, so once again, I'm taking my scalpel and cutting it. And again, this is my liner piece that's going everything is going to sew to this okay and then this will glue and sew to the outside piece and that's how that's going to work okay so we're going to set these two pieces aside for a moment um trying to decide if i want to do a zippered pocket or not i mean we might as well right so let's go ahead and cut one of those out This is two to three ounce uh, bridle that I'm using for all these interior pieces. Again, you can use something a little bit heavier, but I really do try to keep the interiors thin for professionalism. Now we have um, these two holes here that we need to cut out, and that'll be for the zipper opening. Okay, and I always make those with a half inch hole punch. So let me get a half inch hole punch here. Now, if they're a half an inch and I have a half inch hole punch, that means I can't punch it through the template. It means I will damage the template. So I'm going to take a scratch all here and mark those. Now I can give them a whack.
There we go. I'll take my template and put it back on the leather. And I'm going to cut out the space in between to create that channel for that uh, zipper to lay in. Okay. And when I get down to where I'm at cutting this, I don't want to accidentally overcut it. So you got to be really careful and go really slow there at the very end. So if you overcut it, then you're going to damage the hole. And when you fold it in half, that's going to open up and you'll see it. And structurally, it'll be fine. But aesthetically, it will not. All right. So there we've got that cut out. Okay. And when I cut these out, I try really hard to get that cut out just as much with the very edge of that hole as I can so you don't have, um, you know, what looks like two holes in a line cut. Okay. You want it to look like one big... Uh, shape cut out of it. Alright, let me see if I can out of this piece that I screwed up here. One of the things I want to do is I want to double this thing over, okay? So that the back of it's covered and I can use it as a pocket for cash or whatever. And unfortunately it was cut at an angle that I cannot, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this and I'm going to mark you know what I'll use the back of it here I'm going to mark it with a pen I hope I have a pen you know what I'll mark it with the back of my scalpel there we go now I'm going to mark it again this time I'm doing here is I'm making it where this is what I'll cut out because that'll be this doubled over because I'm going to use it to, to create a pocket also okay um, I, I could have cut the template that big and maybe I should have I don't know but I uh, I did not because you can also just take it the half of it there and sew it to the wallet itself and and not have to so here's what I'm gonna do is I've got this straight edge on my leather and I'm just gonna line up where that line is scribed on the back of this template okay and I don't know if you can see it but that line goes straight with that straight edge of, on the leather and now I'll just cut that out bit off here and I don't go to get it there we go sometimes when you cut you create a, a line in your cutting board and it makes it to where the knife wants to continue following that line even if you're trying to recut it so that's what happened there okay now I'm going to show you one of our cool new tool tools that I'm very excited about People have asked us and asked us about this. Um, a lot of folks have a hard time using hole punches with our templates. All right. And um, so we finally got with our tool maker and we now have a taperless hole punch. Okay. It doesn't taper, you know, taper in towards the, the cone of it like most of them do. I mean, it slightly, slightly, slightly does, but not much. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to punch all these holes through the template without breaking my template. But we have a lot of folks, especially in our beginning videos when, I mean, my hole punch fit in the template, so I didn't think to warn people. But uh, people would put their their uh, templates with or hole punches with big tapers on them in the template, and they'd crack their template. And... Uh, we replaced quite a few of them, but then I had to start putting it on videos that, hey, don't do, don't do that. If your hole punch doesn't go all the way through your template, don't use it with it. 
mark your holes and then punch. But anyway, long story short, these are going to be on our website in the next day or two. We only have 10 right now because we want to make sure they worked before we ordered a bunch. Um, but they're going to be worth every daggum penny if you like to use our templates. Alright, line that back up right quick and I'm going to cut my lines for those card slots. So there we go. All six of those lines are cut. All right. Now, normally on uh, when I make one of these templates, I put cut out a little rectangle there, and I say, hey, this is what you use to mark where your tape and tie back are going to go. Um, there wasn't really room on that template to do that, so instead I just made a separate piece. Okay. So. What you're going to do, it's hard since I so chose such a dark leather, so I'll actually show you on the template. You'll turn your template over, you put this thing right at one of those cuts, and then you take an ink pen and just draw a line at the bottom, okay? But you're doing this on your leather, of course, on the back side of your leather. Okay, and then you move it up one, draw a line. Move it up another, draw a line. Do the same thing on the other side. And what we're doing is we're creating the lines where we're going to put the double-sided tape that will go with the Tyvek. Let me grab a pen. All right. So, put this with that bottom line. And draw it up. And I'll move it up one. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to do both lines at a time because why not? Okay. As far as, you know, both lines being left and right sides. There we go see my ink lines drawn there on the back side of the leather and again that is the back side of the leather all right now I'm gonna take my eighth of an inch or sorry quarter of an inch wide double-sided tape here and I'm going to cut off uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 pieces that are roughly the width of these card slots okay so there's one, okay? Now, I'm not going to make you watch me do this 14 times um, because that would just be cruel and unusual punishment. Somebody will turn me in. So, we'll pause this, and when I come back, I'll have 14 of them cut. Okay, so I've got my 14 pieces of, of, of double-sided tape cut. Now, I'm going to take and put one piece at the very bottom of each of these cuts. Okay? At the bottom of them. There's one side. There's the other side. Now, I'm going to take an additional piece and put it above the bottom line directly under the card pocket cuts. Okay, so we drew in our bottom line there. I'm putting it directly above that line um, and centered underneath the card pockets. Okay, just like that. 
Now I'm going to take two more pieces and I'm going to put them just above the top cutout. Anywhere up there, but remembering we're going to fold this thing in half here in a little bit too. You don't want it up into that fold, okay? And that'll be our terminal point for our uh, Tyvek, okay? Now, when we run the Tyvek to do the card pockets this way, uh, take our tape cover off that bottom piece there. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, this was obviously a miscut piece of Tyvek, and that's why it's in my office. Um, it takes about 13 inches or so to do one side of the card pockets here, so I'm going to cut this down to like 18 inches or so, and then I'll shave about a quarter of an inch off of it. Sorry about that. And I'm going to do one side, and then off camera I'll do the other side, so that once again you don't have to listen to me or, or watch me do it twice unless you need to. And if you need to, hit that rewind button. Okay. There we go. Now these are much, this is much closer to the width of the, uh, the pockets. Okay. So I'm going to lay it directly across that tape there. And it's, again, the bottom cut, the piece of tape that's, that's just under the bottom cut. Okay. I'm going to take it and I'm going to pull it down even with that bottom cut. And I'm going to create a crease right there. Okay. There we go. Now, just yesterday, it came up on a, in a Facebook um, group, a whole bunch of folks asking, hey, can you really trust this method of, of credit card and interiors and wallets? And I'm going to say it again, just like I've said every time I see that discussion come up. I wouldn't teach it if it didn't work. I, um, I've made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of wallets this way. And this system, if you're using the right ta tape, does not fail. I have fallen into the lake. I've sweat. I've been through a combat tour in Iraq, all with one of these in my pocket and no problem. The only reason I've ever had to make myself a new wallet is because every year or two I get bored and I want a new one. <laughs> um, but I have had experience with this up to several years and many of my customers when I was doing custom work um, still have theirs that are several years old. All right, now I'm gonna pull it up and I'm gonna crease it even with that bottom line that we drew, okay? Now I will remove the paper from the back of the next piece of tape. Okay. And I'm going to lay it across it, nice and flat, making sure there's not any bubbles or waffles or extra room or anything like that. Now, same thing. I'm going to pull it down, even with that cut, and create a crease line. There we go. Now, we'll see this line, the next uh, line that we drew there. Okay, we need to put a piece of tape directly above that line, but on this Tyvek. So it's going to ray just like that. Okay, now, I've already created a crease here, so I'm going to go ahead and take the backing off this tape, or off this uh, paper. There we go. Now, once again, I'm going to go back up, crease it even with that, that line that that tape was on. And that tape was just above that line, just like the bottom one was, okay? We got our crease, so we're going to go ahead and remove the tape from the top cut. And we're just going to lay it across it, rub it on. Okay, then we'll pull down tight again, create our final card pocket crease. Um, as far as the openings go, and we'll do one more row of tape down here to create the bottom of the third pocket. Once again, just above that, that top line that we drew. There we go. Now, I'm going to pull it back up, 
crease it even with that top line that we drew. And then I'm just going to pull that very top piece of tape, the cover off of it, and that'll be its terminal point. And this card side of card pocket will be done. If I can get the back off the tape. <laughs> okay, now I'm just going to take and cut off my excess Tyvek. Just even with the tape there. Alrighty. So there it is. There is one side. Okay, we've got card pockets that are even and uniform. They'll work great, and then the wallet is still going to be very thin is the main goal here. Now, off camera, I'm just going to go ahead and do the exact same thing to this other side. If you need a re recap of it, just uh, hit rewind. Thanks. All right, so on the first one I did, if you notice, it kind of walked over to the side. It's not square. And it crosses that center line that I'm going to end up sewing down. So all I'm going to do is kind of bend it a little bit, take my scissors, and I'm going to just trim it off. No more problem. Because <laughs> I'm a problem solver. All right. Now, this whole piece is going to end up folding in half. And that's kind of different, difficult because those cuts want to, um, it wants to fold where the cuts are because that's obviously a weak spot in the leather. So you got to force it. You, you line up the bottom part here, run your uh, fold up to the top there, and then here's another one. I've had my squeaky toy in many, many, many videos. Well, this one doesn't squeak. It's got bearings or something in it. It's really heavy, it's really nice, and we also finally have these. So, very excited, because they are worth their weight in gold when doing things like this. Okay, so I'm creating a nice little crease there. And once I sew that, that'll look really nice and that'll lay flat and, and those pockets won't try to pull open like that. Okay, so. I'm going to put a teeny bit of dab, dab of glue right there in that area right there. And then I'm going to glue around the entire perimeter and I'll fold it closed again and recrease that. And then we'll do our stitching on it. We'll stitch down the center and we'll stitch across the top. And that will kind of secure everything that we've done here. And we'll have a really nice set of, set of card pockets that we can sew into the main body of the wallet. Okay. So, grab my contact cement here. And I'm gonna go real light up here in this fold. I'm not gonna put a ton of it up there, but again, I am gonna make it to where when it folds, it, it holds. Aha. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. And then around the edges, let me uh, grab the back of this template here, and I'll use it as my um, to collect my excess glue as I go. Okay, because I'll pull this paper off later anyway on the, the back of this template. For those of you that might be new to our templates, you can pull the brown paper off one side, and then it is opaque. You can see through it. When you do this, you want to make sure not to glob a bunch of glue on there, okay? I'm putting a very, very thin coat. There's not much on my brush. I just need it to hold it um, so that it gets a good clean sew line to it. That's, that's all I'm worried about. Okay, and especially up here where it has the potential to get in between those card pockets, you don't want that. So we are not trying to glue our card pockets shut. All right, so um, I'm gonna seal my glue jar off there. We're gonna wait about two minutes or so for this uh, this contact cement to set up, and then we're gonna fold this in half just like we talked about. So we'll be right back. All right, so I get carried away sometimes, and I apologize. I let the glue set up, and then I just start folding it in half because you know I'm building something. 
got in the mood. So, all I did, seriously, I haven't even pressed it all the way together yet. Um, I uh, just folded it back in half, just like it was before. Okay, and I'm going to continue doing that all the way around and up here too. And then I'm going to use my little roller and really stick it down. There we go. All right, now I'm going to get one more thing. Um, ready to sew together um, and then we'll do some hand sewing here but that's going to be my my zipper area okay so I'm going to take I've got a nine inch dress zipper laying here somewhere there it is okay and I'm just going to stick it in there and punch my holes and sew around it okay no big deal there uh, when I have one of these, I don't worry about getting one that's the exact length I need on these these um, oh what do they call uh, nylon type zippers? Because my sewing machine or my needles will just sew right through that. So what I do is I'll just line up the uh, the closed part of the zipper with one end, double sided tape it all the way around, and um, and get to punching my holes and and uh, and sewing it in. Okay. Um, for this, I use, I love our double-sided tape. I've said it a million times. It's the greatest thing I've ever used for leatherworking. Um, but I can't get it in eighth inch increments, okay? And Tandy does. They, they have a really good tape in an eighth of an inch wide. So I honestly use it for these double-sided zippers um, when I just need a, a much narrower um, line, okay? So, I'm going to pre-roll this the other way. It keeps trying to roll up on me here. There we go. Now it'll lay flatter. Alright, so I'm going to take this double-sided tape and just lay it right on the edge of that opening. Cut it, and I'll do it again over here. And I want it just at the edge, but definitely not to where it peaks over the edge, because you don't like to see that nasty, shiny, double-sided tape inside your finished project, okay? That is a no-go. You will not pass this station. Alrighty. So, I'm going to take and peel the backs off those two pieces. Oops, I tried to peel the whole thing off. There we go. Now I need to lay the zipper. Again, I'm going to line it up with the very end, and then I'm going to push it right and left so that it goes straight across the middle of that opening. Just like that. Okay. Now it is time. Oh, I need to center this end a little bit better. It kind of went off to one side. There we go. Okay, now it's right in the middle. So now what I'm going to do is punch my holes. Um, I'm going to go up the center piece right here, across the top of this right here, and I'm going to go all the way around my zipper right here. Okay? Now, we can use our stackable card pockets and do a couple more pockets over here. And you know what? Since I've got this scrap that I screwed up earlier, I think we should. Alright, so I'll grab those two pieces that I said I wasn't going to use in this video. And we're going to add two more sets of pockets. Um, so four more pockets to this wallet as we go. Okay, um, but honestly we don't need to worry about it right this second. Let's go ahead and stitch these areas up and then we can add those on. Alright, um, I need to find 
my stitching pad. Give me just one second here, folks. All right, so like I said, I'm going to use some new stitching chisels on this. I've never used them before. Brand spanking new to makers. Um, but I'm going to take and scrub me a little stitch line down about oh, 3 sixteenths of an inch from the top there. Okay, and what this is, this is a 4 millimeter um, diamond hole chisel. Okay. Going to start in about a quarter of an inch from the edge or so. Uh, this one is 10 holes wide. So, there we go. Those are nice holes um, that slides in and out of the leather very easily. Goes into my punching board easily. And uh, yeah, I may like these. Duck might have been a little bit right about it. Maybe. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. He won't watch this video anyway, so, yeah. And I'll stop that line just a quarter of an inch or so from the other side, okay? Now, I need to scrub me another line this way to uh, separate those two card pockets. I'm just going to take and I should use my uh, ruler I can see through here. All right, grab my scratch all. There we go. And again, I'll start about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. So there it is. Now I'm going to hand stitch uh, that on there. Okay, um, I'm not going to do uh, this on camera. I'm not going to do a hand stitching class on this one because uh, I've talked about it in many, many videos. Plus, with this new setup, I would actually have to get out the other camera and face it that way. And anyway, um, so yeah, when I come back, this will be stitched. And I'm also going to do the exact same thing and just sew all the way around this right here. Okay, I'll use the same same punch, punch my holes, um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna use a. Uh, let's see what thread I've got available to me here before we cut out. I'm gonna use this Dove main thread. I have it in two different sizes because on everything that's two layers of thickness or thicker, I'll use this 0 .030, which is about a 0.8 millimeter uh, thread. But uh, when I go around this zipper here, I'm going to use this tiny one, and it's 0 .020. Uh, so it's about a 0 0.55 millimeter um, thread. And uh, just when it's something that thin, um, this thread looks too bulky on it. So they're the exact same color, just different, different thicknesses. It is okay to use the same thickness on both areas and everything, but I'm, I'm always on a quest to refine my work and make it a little bit nicer, and that is one of the things I've noticed that can really help. So, again, I'm going to hand sew those two areas, and uh, then we'll come back. We'll build some tea pockets on this one, and um, we'll start assembling this wallet. All right, so I got that um, sewn up right there, and I got these two lines sewn up right here. And, um, yeah, I'm going to have to have to hand it to Doc. These are uh, pretty nice chisels. I like them a lot. So, um, on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the zipper back from the edge and snip it off. Okay. And then here I'll take these two little tabs on the front end and do the same thing so that it doesn't get glued into the, the stitch line here. Okay, when we go to fold that thing in half. We can just discard these pieces. Okay, so this piece will be like this. It will end up being sewn on three sides, so it'll make a nice little zippered pouch pocket thingy. Okay, 
All right, now we talked about we're going to do some stacked leather pockets on that piece. So let me get this thing out of the way. All right, so we're going to need to cut out one of each of these pieces. All right, so this is the front pocket, and then this is the one that goes behind it. You know, they'll stack up just like this. And um, they'll fit on this. Okay, and I made sure that there was plenty of room for the cards and everything to work out there. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut those out right quick. We're going to do a tiny bit of scabbing on them. And, um, yeah. Now, this area kind of gets into the belly. Uh, there's some, some uh, fold and stretch mark type areas of it so I'm going to be careful with how and where I cut my pieces um, making sure like this part right here is the only exposed part of this piece so I'll go ahead and cut it out of a nice area Cutting out these tea pockets, I'll do it this way. I just start in the corner there, press down, and pull away. Making sure, of course, that I get a nice straight cut. Okay, you don't want that at an angle at all, because then the lock pockets won't line up well. always in the corners, um, you know, that I need some help with my cuts. I should have put a new blade on this because I did break the tip off this blade well ago. And that would have solved all this problem. Alright. All with this tiny little bit here. go. Oops, the wrong piece. I needed to throw that piece and that piece. I'll come over here and cut this piece up. And it's just a rectangle so it's easier. I need to do a quick skive on this one okay because when these stack up you don't want to feel the bottom of this pocket under here okay so you, if you get a nice little skive down there at the bottom you won't have that issue all right and then also I'm gonna trim up I've got a little bit of fuzziness here I want that going there we go scabbing knife here. It's got a decent blade on it so I'm not going to hone it up right now. And I'm just going to scab the very bottom. Okay. brand new cutting mat so I'm trying not to scab into the mat too much. Um, technically you should have a nice piece of glass to scab on and I do have a nice glass one of these but it's over in the other in the store right now. So anyway that that scab that out down nicely and I'll leave it at that. Um, I also want to scab this little area as much as I can and I'm just going to kind of start here 
and work my way out towards the corner. And this is where it helps to kind of be able to go both ways on it, you know. And a while ago I was doing left to right, now I'm trying to do right to left. There we go. That'll do on this one. Um, if I used my scabbing machine, I could do better, but I'm always using that machine, and I had to prove to some folks, I guess, that I can probably skive. Um, all right, now, we gotta decide which side of this pocket we want out, since the wallet is meant to stand up. Um, so the wallet's meant to stand up like this, so it doesn't really matter which end the zipper's on. I'll prefer it to be on this side right here, but we'll see how it falls. Um, if the wallet were one that stands up like this, then I would want it to where the zipper was up in the closed position, okay, and not down. So I, um, I purposefully cut this out of some ugly leather because I knew that, you know, I could hide that on the inside of a pocket or whatever. So what I'm going to do is this will be the pretty outside, okay. So I have to take this piece put it up against it like so and I don't have to have this folded over I can stretch it out there now put this one behind it and just line up the T's okay and if the bottom of this T is right at the top of the other pocket then we're good to go Okay, and then we look all the way across here. There we go. Now, I'm just making sure like the bottom of my pocket is even with the bottom of the, the um, zippered pouch. And the T's are lined up, so now I pull this one off. I'll set a straight edge right where the bottom of this one is. Just going to scrub me a little line. Now that is where that pocket will be um, glued on and stitched and then we'll put the other pocket on top of it and stitch down the outside edge. Okay, but first we would have to stitch up the center line there before we can close this and sew down the, uh, the outside edges. Okay, there's, there's orders of march on all this stuff because again this is all just going to sew to the uh, the liner, and then the liner is going to sew to the um, rest of the wallet. Okay. So I'm going to put a very, very light um, coat of uh, contact cement on here. Then I'll put another light coat just above this line that I drew. Got a little crazy there. If you get too much on there, wait until it dries for just a few minutes, a couple of minutes, and you can just roll it off with your finger, okay? And on this, I'll actually have to show you what I'm talking about, but um, we're gonna pause the camera for just a minute or two, and then uh, when I come back, I'll roll off that excess glue. All right, it's been about two minutes. So what I'm going to do is just take my finger, and like I said, I'm just going to roll this excess glue off. Okay? And then it does create kind of a big ball of glue here. I'm going to pull that off because that will actually create a lump underneath my leather. Now, I can place this on there, and I just want to line it up with the sides. It's the same width as the other piece. And then make sure it's right on that line at the bottom. Okay, and then one way I can check to make sure I'm good to go is the top line should be parallel to that sew line. And it is, so we're good to go. Alright, so now I'm just going to stitch me a line right here. And I'm not even going to be careful with it. I'm just going to kind of run a running stitch through it and everything. I'm, I just need to hold that part down and then it will never come off in its entire life. So, yeah. Let me 
grab. Take me a st stitch line here, just an eighth of an inch or so from the bottom. my thin thread on this because it's not shown on the outside of the wallet and it also um, it's inside that pocket and I, if I use a heavier thread it can show up on the outside you know if you press that together you can kind of burnish the shape of that thread in there so all right so there's my line um, I'm going to pause the camera hand stitch this be right back all right so we got that sewn on. Now what we need to do is take our other pocket piece here, line it up with that one, and we're going to glue it down all the way around, okay? So we will glue from up here, let me get something to point with, from up here all the way down around and up to the same point on the other side. Sorry, my hand's blocking it and I'm using a dark leather, it's hard to see. So, yeah, we're going to glue all of that down and um, then we can uh, fold, sorry, we will create a stitch line right up the center here and then fold the whole thing in half and glue it, uh, glue it all together. Now, on this side, or this piece, I'm just going to put my contact cement on three sides of it. And we'll call that good. Just an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch is all we need. We don't need a huge wide border of it. And again, I'm not trying to get any globs at all. Just enough that it's a little bit shiny. And that'll be enough to hold all this together and create a nice seam once it's sewn. Okay. All right. I'm not going to wait on this to dry. I'm just going to go ahead and stick her down. Um, it'll be okay. I promise. Got a little bit of contact cement on here, probably from my finger. Um, again, not a problem. Uh, once it's at that perfect amount of dry, I just roll it right off. So I'm going to start with my lineup right under the T-slot there. Okay. Then I'm going to come across here and do the exact same thing. Push it right up against that T. And then the rest of it can just fall into place where it is. If it's not quite at the edge, we'll trim the edge. I, I don't care. And it is about a half a millimeter from the edge. That's okay. All right, let's get some of this extra glue off here. I got messy. That happens a lot. <laughs> I've got a uh, gum eraser that I'll use to get the rest of that off since it's being a little bit stubborn there. Okay. Okay, so those are glued down and that's great extra glue up there that's part of the problem now I need to find the center right here and just stitch me a line right up the middle of it to separate those card pockets okay and I'm gonna stitch it all the way Okay. 
you got to remember to do this before you fold it in half and so uh, glue it shut because otherwise you're not going to get this on here without gluing or uh, stitching your, your pocket closed. Um, I actually made that mistake on the very first one of these I made. It wasn't a zippered pouch, but there's nowhere to put cash because I forgot to sew these centers before I sewed the entire thing to the to the backing. So there's nowhere for cash in this one. It is truly a failed attempt. But that's how we learn best. Fail at something. Tell me to do something a thousand times, I will forget it. Let me fail at it once, I will never forget it. I did punch one extra hole just above the top pocket there. Okay, you can see it in there. Um, so I'm going to stitch. I'll start up there, work my way down to the bottom, and then just back stitch two holes. So, one moment, we'll have that done. Alright, so I got that center line sewn up. Now I'm going to just glue around the exterior perimeter of this piece. just a second for that to set up and um, all right that's good enough <laughs> all right and now I'm just gonna fold it over and glue my edges real nice and straight I can use the roller, or I can hit it with a hammer, but either way, I need to get that sucker to stick real nicely. So I've got the hand roller right here handy. I've gotten super careless with my glue. I really am going to have to go after this thing with the gum eraser and uh, get all these glue spots off of here. Um, not really sure what's going on here uh, other than I'm being careless, I guess. All right, so now um, I need to st stitch across the bottom here and the bottom here, but I'm going to do that to the liner, okay? Um, so it'll be a little something like this and this. Now when you're stitching all of this into your liner, you need to keep into account a couple of measurements, all right? Um, you need to make sure that you're going to stay about a half an inch or so from the top here because that's going to go inside this frame. All right, so if you don't have enough room to put a card that sticks up high enough and isn't in the frame, then it needs to come down some more, okay? Um, if you're making one that's going to be extra fat and it's going to have lots of uh, gusset to it and stuff like that, you may even want to make this piece and, and the outside piece longer, all right? Now... If I were to make the gusseted foam pocket, I would just cut me a gusset that's about the width of the, or the length of this, and about a half inch wide. And then I would 
sew it to the back of this and then sew the other end of it to the side of the wallet okay but this one's going to be for Janie and she did not request that so it's not happening so um, what I can do is kind of temporarily place these I'll draw a line with my uh, scratch all here and then I'll know where to put my, my glue okay so let's say I did it here. We're going to measure this. I'm going to put it three quarters of an inch from the top end. Then I'm going to put the other one, the exact same measurement, from the top. That's going to be a good measurement. That will leave me plenty of room for the top bar and for everything to close at the top, even if it's full of junk. Um, and yet, it's going to be enough room at the bottom that it will close well, once again, even if it's full of junk, okay? So, three quarters of an inch is going to be good. Um, I could move it down a little bit further and call it seven eighths, but uh, three quarters will work just fine too, okay? So, I'm going to set this up one more time just to make sure that my measurements are good while I do my mark. And I'll mark right along there. And now I'll know where to put my glue. Okay. Same thing over here. And matter of fact, though, there's a tiny bit of difference in the layers there. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut down that very, very edge with a super sharp knife. And that will straighten all of that out. Okay. See what old knives I've got available to me here. Here's a head knife I hardly ever use. Let's hope I can use it without hurting myself. That's why I don't really use these very often because I will hurt myself. Beautiful. Thank you, Terry Nipchel. <laughs> I love the classic look and feel of a head knife, but again, I don't use them very often because that's a lot of exposed blade for a guy like me to be having in the shop. So, all right. So we're going to measure this one three quarters of an inch down, just like the other one. down the bottom of it to mark where it's going to glue in. Okay, one of those lines is pretty light and difficult to see, but I can see it well enough to know that's where it is. Now, I'm going to put these pieces back on here right quick, because there's another line I need to mark. And that's where the top of this is, because I don't want to put glue past the top. So I'm just going to use my fingernails, let me get back on camera there, use my fingernails right up underneath there and just make a little mark. And I'll do the exact same thing over here. If I'm a little bit louder, I apologize. I'm standing up now. So I've been sitting in my little office chair way too long. <laughs> All right, a little line, a little line. Now, I'm gonna pay, place glue from that line down around here, and then the exact same thing right here. And then I'll do the back side of this on three sides, and the back side of this on three sides. Then I'm going to stick them all together. I love a trim, trimming that after um, after sticking those layers together because it's just all the glue and stuff like that just gone. So good stuff. Speaking of glue, got a good bit of it on my hand there. It's what the bottom of my desk is for. It's not just for boogers anymore. 
<laughs> Sorry. Same thing on the other side. I'm uh, pushing my glue brush down so it'll get more glue on it. Ugh. Problem is it gets glued in. <laughs> First side's gonna be ready to press together already. Just nice and flat all the way across and right on that line that I drew. We'll say that that second side is good to go too. Even though it could wait another minute or two, I had some thicker areas on it. Okay. Now again, all I'm going to sew is right across the bottoms of these. Okay, and then we're going to come. We're going to put the the. Um, liner to the outside, glue it all together, trim it out, and sew up the sides and put the bars on it. It's going to be glorious. Okay. Um, I need to find my little wing dividers here so I can mark my stitch lines. the exact same chisels I've been using the whole time and I'm going to start about a quarter of an inch in from the end we're gonna get this bad boy stone uh, sewn, sewn, sewn in sharp that's for sure these irons I'm using I almost feel like I don't need the mallet but I know I do <laughs> all right folks I'm gonna pause the camera I'm gonna hand sew these two lines and then I'll come back and we'll uh, sew it to the liner all right so I got those two sewn up now all that's left to do is attach this to the outside piece of the wallet and sew it up and then put the bars on. Okay, so I'm going to move this for just a moment here. 
got my embossed ostrich that I decided I wanted to be the outside of this, mostly so it'll match that little yellow backpack we made. Okay, and I'm just gonna glue it to it and then stitch it to it. Okay, no big secret to it, no real tricks other than I'm gonna, I'm putting it on here. I'm gonna trace around the outside of this and that's gonna help me to not waste a lot of time gluing but yet make sure that I have glue everywhere I need glue. Okay, so first thing I'll do is slather glue all over the back of this using the other piece here is my uh, backdrop so I don't just get glue everywhere you know because we've already proven that I can be quite messy today. I almost stopped just to go over there and get the daggum gum eraser and get that off but I can do it afterward. No big deal. But it bothers me. <laughs> okay, and I want to make sure my glue gets all the way out to my edges on this piece um, so that I can really get a good edge on the final piece. And what I'll probably do is take some of that. Uh, Alpha 6 paint and use it as an edge paint. Um, it, that's not technically what it's supposed to be, but it sure does work great as an edge paint. Um, anyway, I'll take a dark brown and run it around the outside of it and sand it and reapply just like I do any edge paint. And that will uh, that'll make a nice, pretty dark brown, burnished looking edge on it. Okay. So the reason I drew that square on here is so that I can make sure that I get glue everywhere I need it. Because there's nothing worse than doing a giant glob of glue and thinking you got all your spots. And then when you put your piece on it, you're missing a corner or something and you just won't have good res as good of results. So. And I'll still go a little bit outside those lines because, I mean, the likelihood of me putting it down exactly in that same spot are uh, pretty slim. I know that because it's hard. So, if I don't draw that square, I tend to glue up a half a side of leather just in case. <laughs> So there we are. It's a good even spread. I'm going to give this, since it's such a big area, I'm going to give it a minute to, to set up. So I'm going to pause the camera right quick. All right, I gave that about five minutes of setup time. So I'm just going to take and set it down where the uh, corners kind of line up here. Sorry, I just hit the camera with my head. Still getting used to this new setup. All right, press it around. Now I'll take my uh, scalpel. I'm going to go ahead and replace my blade so I have a nice fresh one that doesn't have a busted tip on it. And I'm just going to trim it right there, even with the liner. Some tough leather right there, so I'm gonna... there we go.
All right. So there's what I'm sewing into. Uh, I'll just stitch up the sides. Um, on the previous ones, I stitched up the top too, but there's not really a reason to. Okay, and then this thing will fold in half like this. I'll finish some edges, and we're going to put those bars on it, and it's going to look beautiful. Alrighty. But first, I got to sew. So I got to bring my black pad back up here. Grab my wing dividers. Those ones I was using don't have too sharp of a point on them, and I need one for for this. And uh, yeah, this zipper I'm gonna unzip it a little bit because that zipper um, makes it difficult to get that area kind of flat. Just a light scribe line where my stitch line is going to be. And that'll do, pig. That'll do. Alright. Take my uh, stitching irons just like I have before. need an extra tap some of this is getting a little bit thick so So you get the idea. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ha hand stitch this area. And then uh, when I come back, um, I'm going to do both sides, of course. When I come back, we will put those bars on it. And um, that'll be that. This sucker's done. So bear with me. All right, folks. So I sewed that down. And I went ahead and went across the street and grabbed me um, some dark brown thread I just thought it would look nice on it okay so now we have to put the little bars on it and there's not much of a trick to that but we'll talk about it here all right so this is actually a sample set the guy sent me um, it's brass we're gonna have the brass ones in stock here pretty soon um, so the biggest thing is, you know, the it's pretty straightforward how they go on. You just put it on one side and then you insert those screws and they hold it into place, okay? And you don't have to punch the holes for the screws or anything. I mean, just put them in there and tighten the living crap out of them, okay? But you do want to look at which side you put the little clasp on, okay? So whether you made it specifically for it to, to have the clasp on one side or not, um, because the other side, you're going to have to cut out that area right there where the clasp goes all the way through. Okay, so I'm going to do it just like this, and, um, you know, everything's going to close up real nicely here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ink pen and mark where that, that cutout needs to be, and then I'll just use a couple of little hole punches to uh, cut it out like I always do. Okay, just like cutting out uh, the oblong zipper part. Just use a couple of hole punches and a knife and get her cut out. Um, technically, you could just cut all the way and remove that entire piece of leather. Um, we'll, we'll see how it turns out on if I need to do that or not. But I'm going to take my hole punch and make sure it kind of matches up to uh, the size of the opening there. cut in between those two this is 
where, um, kind of like when I do filigree work, if I had a, my wood chisel over here, I would just use my little wood chisel to cut this area out, and it sure would go quick and easy. Okay, kind of clean up that cut, because I don't want to be able to see the ugly, ugliness through the clasp. So I'll set that back on there, see if I cut out enough of it. Not really. Um, you can still see plenty of leather in that hole. Okay, the yellow makes it a little easier to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that top portion like we talked about. I'm going to make sure it closes and it closes nicely like that now I do have to put the screws in it it is trying to pop right off because the screws aren't in it but um, there it is right there folks I'm pretty excited about it I am going to finish these edges right here um, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, if you if you watch my uh, when I did the indelible um, edge ink I'm gonna use our alpha 6 paint the exact same way and I'm gonna I'm gonna um, bevel those edges down and put the paint on there and then I'm gonna sand it with like some 400 grit sandpaper and then I'm gonna do it again and then I'm gonna sand it again I'm gonna do it again and when it's all done it'll have a really nice pretty dark brown edge and um, it'll look like it's burnished even though none of this well the the bridle you could burnish um, and the other stuff, it won't burn us that well, maybe with token oil or something like that. So anyway, there it is, folks. Like I said, all you have to do is put those four screws in there. You do not need to pre-punch any holes or anything to do it. Um, you just twist them in there nice and tight and twist them in until you can run your finger across the top and not feel the, the screw popping out, okay? So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you uh, learned something. These bars are going to be on our website by the time this video is posted. Um, unfortunately, with uh, ordering mix-up and everything we had, I don't have a ton of them right now, but we've got a couple of hundred of them on the way. So um, it'll be first come, first serve till those get here. So anyway, I uh, hope you uh, learned something today, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I will answer them. Have a great day. I'm Aaron Heiser of Maker's Leather Supply.